ever sat down for a quick game and promised yourself just one more level and before you know it, hours have flown by. Games have this magical ability to pull us in, to keep us hooked and sometimes make us lose track of time entirely. Hi, I'm Flo from Wild Chain, and today we're diving into the mind-bending psychology behind what makes games so addictive and why we are coming back for just one more round. A short disclaimer before we get started, I'm not a psychologist and I will be simplifying things, but now let's get started. All right, let's kick things off with the big question. Why do we even play games in the first place? Sure, they're, they're fun and entertaining, uh, but there's way more going on under the hood. According to the self-determination theory, games tap into three core human needs. Number one is autonomy. Uh, we love feeling in control, uh, whether it's picking a character or you choose how to solve a puzzle. Um, games really give us that freedom to make our own choices. Number two is competence, because nothing feels better than getting good at something. Games are really like mini confidence boosters, because every time we nail a level or beat a boss, it makes us feel accomplished and capable. And number three is relatedness, because humans are social creatures, and whether we are teaming up with a friend in a game or we're showing off our high score to the world, games give us a sense of connection. In short, games aren't just time killers. They take all the boxes when it comes to our basic psychological needs. Let's talk about one of our brain's favorite chemicals, dopamine. You know that rush that you get when you finally beat that boss you tried to beat for many times or you find some legendary loot? That's dopamine working its magic. Games are designed to give out these little dopamine hits from time to time so that we feel great and that we want to keep playing, especially with variable rewards. Ever noticed how it even feels better when you randomly get something cool in a game? Like a rare item drop, for example. So that unpredictability keeps us on edge, always thinking, okay, maybe it, in the next, the next chest will have that epic sword that I'm looking for. And that's what keeps you playing. At the heart of most games is something called a progression loop. And that would be, for example, play, earn, upgrade, repeat. Whether you are leveling up a hero in an RPG or unlocking new gear in a shooter, games are constantly feeding us little micro goals. And our brains, they love micro goals. Each small win feels like a little pat on the back and is pushing us to go after bigger and better things. You ever got so into a game that you lost track of time? That's called flow state. A Hungarian-American psychologist coined this term of flow state and it happens when a game hits that sweet spot um, between challenging enough to keep us engaged but then on the other hand not so hard that we rage quit. I think Zelda The Breath of the Wild is a great example of this. It really strikes a great balance and makes combat challenging but not overwhelming. It lets you rely on strategy and creativity rather than just stronger stats, which a lot of games do. It gives you also the freedom to approach tough enemies your own way. So it feels rewarding without being frustrating. And um, whether you're a, a new player or an experienced player. Ever wonder why you can stop thinking about unfinished quests or that almost one battle? That's called the Zygarnik effect. And it's our brain's tendency to remember incomplete tasks better than finished ones. Games take advantage of this by leaving you with open-ended goals. So maybe you're close to completing a mission or just a few points away from unlocking a new character. And your quest log is filled with tasks just waiting to be checked off. These unfinished quests stick in your mind encourage you to return to the game and finish them. Have you ever lost a game just by a very small margin only to feel like you have to try it again? This is the near miss effect. Games make near wins almost feel as exciting as actual wins. For example, in slot machines, you might see 
two matching symbols line up perfectly, with the third one just one spot away from completing the jackpot. That near win triggers almost the same excitement as an actual win, making you feel like you're so close that you just have to spin again. Now, video games use this principle in the same way, whether it's losing a match just by a few points or a barely missing an enemy, you always feel like victory is just within reach. So you keep playing, convinced that with one more try, you will succeed. The more effort we put into something, the more we value it. This is known as the IKEA effect, named after the famous furniture store where you can build your own furniture. Even though assembling IKEA furniture can be a little bit frustrating sometimes, once you've put it together yourself, you feel a stronger attachment to it than if you would have bought it pre-assembled. Now, games take advantage of this by allowing us to create and personalize, whether it's customizing a character in The Sims or building your own dream base in Minecraft. So the more time you invest in building and upgrading, the more attached you feel, making it harder to stop playing. Games are masters at tapping into our FOMO, fear of missing out. There might be limited time events in the game, daily rewards, exclusive skins that make us feel like we have to log in or otherwise we'll miss something cool. And then there's the social side, whether you're battling alongside your friends in Fortnite or racing to the top of the leaderboard in Call of Duty. Games make us feel like we're part of something bigger. It's fun, but it's also a sneaky way to keep us coming back for more. Let's also talk about the sunk cost fallacy. So that's one of the biggest reasons why we keep spending money and why we keep playing games. It's that feeling where the more time or money you put into something, the harder it becomes to walk away. You already invested so much, so it now it just feels wrong to stop. In games, this happens all the time. You've probably spent hours leveling up your character, customizing the way just the way you like it, unlocked special items. At that point, spending a little extra for an upgrade or a, a rare item doesn't feel like a big deal. It actually feels necessary to, to justify the effort you, you put into it. It's like you're thinking, I've come this far already, so I might as well go all the way. It's this psychological trap that keeps us spending. It's the sunk cost fallacy in action, and it's super effective at keeping us invested in the game, both mentally and financially. So what makes games so addictive? It's not just clever game design, it's the way they tap into our psychology from dopamine driven rewards to the power of flow and progression loops. So let me know in the comments what games keep you hooked and why. And if you want to help us to co-develop our play to impact game Wild Chain, then please join our Discord. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.